Marcia. Marcia, could you come up here, please? Could you come up here, please? I just noticed on the doors, Barr is not here. Could you do the first reading? Why don't you look it over while you're up here? Okay. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'll come up with afterwards, or should I Yeah, come up with afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to look at it now? I hope it sounds so stupid. I, Ralph was good. Is he going to do a reading next week? Well, he thinks so. We're going to wait and see. But do you want to read this one over the book? Okay. Yeah. Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Parish on this beautiful day. Uh, we are welcoming Father John Kerwin as our presider today, and which we're very glad to have him with us. The volunteer information brochures are in the entrances of both sites and in the pews down here at the south end with contact information in them. So uh, please review them and consider what ministry you may be able to assist with. The parish office will be closed on Monday, July 4th in the observance of the 4th of July. Uh, they will be back in the office on Tuesday, July 5th at 9 a.m. Okay. An update, masking and safety. Beginning Saturday, July 2nd, mask wearing will be optional for all people attending mass and receiving communion. However, depending on their comfortability, some people may choose to continue wearing them. Please be respectful. Mass intentions for this Sunday are Sheila F. K. Hill, her 17th anniversary, Daniel J. Flanagan, his 16th anniversary, and Jean Megan Ryan, first anniversary, all requested by Joyce Flanagan. So please, let's stand and welcome Father Kerwin. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the grace and peace of God our Creator, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> My sisters and brothers gathered together in Christ, let us ask for forgiveness with confidence, for our God is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and judge, hear our prayer as we gather at the table of your word. Enrich our hearts with the goodness of your wisdom and renew us from within, that all our actions, all our words may bear the fruit of your transforming grace. And we make this our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, our brother who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will, pres I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing current, torrent. As nurslings you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem you will find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does in, in uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, we have a reading from the Holy Gospel as recorded for us by Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, First say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on them. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered you. For the laborer deserves their payment. Do not move about from, house to, from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. 
Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to your feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. And Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> that line from the Gospel today, <clears throat> the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. That's a line that I think we have misused in the church. And I, I'm gonna suggest that if anybody can tell me how we misused it, I'll take them out to breakfast. Uh, anybody wanna try? how we misused that verse, that line. The people up at St. James aren't eligible because they already heard this. Uh, or up at the Delaware Avenue site, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, Chuck. No, no, no. Good try, good try, right. You tried, that's the main thing, right. Actually, we used to use that when we were trying to drum up vocations, saying, you know, uh, uh, the laborers are few, so we asked the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers. And we were thinking more about priests than we were, uh, you know, uh, the baptized. And that was a misuse of that. So <clears throat> the gospel this weekend, as we celebrate the 246th year of our independence, and we're inclined to be seen as the most powerful nation on earth, I think we have to keep in mind that the psalmist tells us that God has never been impressed by horsepower. So where does that leave us? I think the gospel tells us that Jesus sent his disciples out without snack packs, canteens, credit cards, hotel reservations. He sent them out two by two so that they might support each other in moments of weakness, that they might protect each other if the need arose. And they were sent to prepare the way ahead of him 72 were sent. That's a, a large number. And you can be sure that included in the 72 were not just a group of men, but that there were women as well. And of course, they don't mention that fact, but uh, you know, uh, uh, the men who wrote this uh, you know, gospel, <clears throat> they didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, consider the women uh, uh, because they were not important in that day and age. But uh, uh, Jesus sent them all out, male and female. And <clears throat> they were to prepare the way ahead of him. They were to offer peace to all those that they met. 
And the peace that they offered them was not just the absence of war, but it was a whole way of well-being and <clears throat> enrichment, you might say, uh, for their lives. Uh, the Jewish term, again, shalom, meant a lot more than just simply peace man. Uh, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> it meant uh, that they were to have, uh, you might say, uh, the best of all uh, that they had to offer. The disciples were sent out <clears throat> without a lot of encumbrances. They were to travel lightly. And I was telling the folks up at the uh, Delaware Avenue site that uh, my older brother, who some of you have met, uh, and he's a, uh, a preacher, <clears throat> and uh, he's in a community that, uh, you know, are, are really mendicants. Uh, they're beggars. Uh, that's a nice way of calling people uh, uh, beggars. But uh, <clears throat> I, I think he's kind of out of place in, the, in that community because whenever he comes to visit me, he's always loaded down with suitcases. And I'm saying to myself, why in God's name is he bringing all this stuff, uh, you know, with him? Uh, and then it ends up all around the house. Uh, and uh, uh, my mother used to say, he has my house in an uproar. And I would say, well, just tell him he can't, uh, you know, move out of the bedroom. But uh, I've tried, but it doesn't do any good. So, uh, you know, uh, at any rate, uh, he, he, he never, uh, you know, took this gospel seriously, I don't think. Uh, but at any rate, the 72 went out. They cured the sick and they announce the kingdom of God, a way of justice and peace for all. And <clears throat> I think we still have a lot of work to do when it comes to sharing that peace, that shalom. For example, with the many migrants on our southern shore or border and those uh, who seek refuge on our shores. Today, the Lord looks to us <clears throat> to go out and to share the good news of God's love with all of humanity and all of creation. Each one of us who respond to that baptismal call are required <clears throat> to go forth and to proclaim this good news. And the way we do it is maybe not gonna make the evening uh, news uh, or the headlines in the newspapers, but that's not what's important. Uh, it requires of us, you might say, a broadening of our vision and a willingness to step out of our comfort zone, as it were, to be bearers of that peace and that well-being for the world. Uh, and we might each do it in a different way, uh, <clears throat> and it might not uh, sound like much to us, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're called to try at least. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, if we make an effort, then uh, God will supply what we need in order for it to uh, bear fruit. <clears throat> but it requires a certain willingness on our part. Uh, last week, I was at uh, one of these synod sessions, <clears throat> and it's the last for the diocese. And... Um, I have to tell you, I was a little bit dispirited uh, when I heard over and over again from those who attended, uh, they wanted to kind of retreat into their own comfort zones and uh, to get all wrapped up in themselves, as it were, and not to be concerned about other people. Uh, they were all talking about how uh, in the old days, uh, you know, we did it this way. And, uh, you know, why can't we go back, uh, you know, to that way? Well, uh, that way is, is contrary to the way that Jesus, uh, you know, talks about in the gospel today. Uh, he sent them out uh, for uh, a, a purpose and to get them out of themselves and to help others, uh, not to uh, just kind of sit and gloat. And I even see some of the, uh, uh, the laborers, uh, you know, uh, uh, the new uh, vocations, they again, you know, they're going backwards instead of forwards. And you kind of like say, what is it all about? Uh, you know, uh, uh, 
resorting to, uh, uh, you know, to lace and to Latin. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't think the people out on the street uh, understand Latin, uh, or nor are they interested in lace. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they're just interested in somebody uh, uh, giving them an opportunity to maybe uh, rise up above uh, uh, what they are knowing uh, and what they uh, have to deal with. Uh, so. <clears throat> The thing is, is that uh, we're called at baptism uh, to the way of Christ. Uh, and the way of Christ is, what can I do for you? Uh, that's what Jesus says. Jesus was a man of few words. Uh, and he would approach people uh, who were uh, approaching him uh, with that uh, you know, uh, uh, invitation. What can I do for you? So maybe... Uh, that's the way we go out and uh, uh, greet others uh, uh, or uh, respond to others who come to us. Uh, you know, ask them you know, what uh, we can do for them. Uh, just this morning, uh, before I came down, I uh, went over to uh, uh, the local stewards to pick up the New York Times. Uh, and uh, um, as I'm pulling into the, uh, uh, the parking lot, uh, there was a uh, fellow <coughs> a couple of doors away, who obviously had spent the night out on the street and not in a, uh, you know, an air-conditioned air conditioned bedroom like I did. And, uh, you know, he was a little bit disheveled and what have you. Uh, so I said, can I get you a cup of coffee? And he kind of, you know, uh, hesitated. And then he said, nah. He said, have you got some change? And I said, no, but I'll get you a cup of coffee. And it was true, I didn't have any change. I just had bills, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, I wasn't lying, but uh, he didn't want the, uh, you know, uh, the cup of coffee. So I said, well, uh, you know, I, I did what I could. Uh, so at any rate, uh, Jesus, again, sent them out like lambs among wolves. Uh, and <clears throat> that wasn't very encouraging, uh, but they had a choice. Uh, they could preach a message that people <clears throat> that made people comfortable in their complacency or they could preach the message of Jesus that called for change in their lives uh, basically fundamental change uh, uh, and nothing to uh, you know uh, uh, outside their uh, uh, their reach or their comfort zone and he promised them the gift of healing and what happened uh, they returned full of enthusiasm for the welcome that they received <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> at the doorsteps that they, uh, uh, you know, arrived at. Uh, so they had obeyed Jesus, and it worked. Uh, our discipleship <clears throat> today, I think, can be summed up in two phrases: "Come and see." and go and tell. And if we have felt the value of having Christ in our lives, I think we'll want to uh, tell others about Christ uh, and not keep it to ourselves, uh, you know, and kind of hoard it, uh, but uh, to offer it to others uh, and to offer it in a way that might, uh, you know, uh, uh, entice them uh, to be gentle, uh, not to go in, uh, you know, with, uh, um, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, um, noise and what have you, uh, uh, or beat them over the head, as I think sometimes we were guilty of doing in the past. Um, we can all bear witness <clears throat> to Christ um, through the quality of our lives. And as kind of a check, uh, we might ask ourselves, the, uh, the question that's attributed to uh, uh, an English author, G.K. Chesterton, who was back in the, uh, uh, the 19th century in England. And he said, if you were accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? If you were accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you. Think about it.
Let us stand in prayer and speak to, other, speak to each other of our needs and our concerns and our thanksgivings. The God of eternal life calls us to be communities where his presence is, thank you, where his presence is known. Let us pray together for the needs of our world. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that more lay and ordained workers for the harvest may be inspired so that the good news may be proclaimed in every town, in every city, in every place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we celebrate Independence Day, that our leaders may truly provide liberty and justice for all 50 states of this country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish of St. Francis of Assisi, that we may continue to work toward being a place where all are welcomed, cared for, and valued, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the law enforcement agencies in the Albany area, that they strive to endorse the laws of our communities and secure safety for all the residents of this city and towns of our region. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all travelers on this 4th of July weekend, that they will be mindful of the rules of the road and courteous of fellow travelers by showing God's love toward all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and infirmed, especially George Abado and Ralph Balfoot, that God will come to them with his healing power and love, and that they may feel his presence in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased of our parish, may they always be with us in our minds and hearts, and in God's everlasting forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now mention by first name all those we wish to remember in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, <clears throat> we stand before you with great confidence and ask that you give us that which we have not had the wisdom nor the insight to ask for, but would you see as being necessary if we are to be faithful to your word? And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, <clears throat> that our offerings be pleasing and acceptable to the Creator in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O oh God, by means of sacramental signs, you bring about the work of redemption. Grant that our worship at this table may be worthy of the mysteries we celebrate. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, holy God, all loving and eternal one. Through, lo <clears throat> through your beloved son, you created the human family. Through him, you restored us to your likeness. Therefore, it is your right to receive the obedience of all creation, the praise of the church on earth, the thanksgiving of your saints in heaven. We too rejoice with all the angels as they sing the hymn of your glory. <clears throat> Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fountain of all holiness. In communion with the whole church, we have assembled on this day which you have made holy, and rejoicing that you have made us <clears throat> a new creation in your risen Son, we pray that you would send down your Spirit upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who before he was given up to death, a death that he freely accepted, he took our bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he offered you grace and praise, and sharing the cup with his friends said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We pray that all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Perfect us in love, together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Edward and Howard, the bishops of Albany, 
with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who minister to your holy people. Remember our sisters and brothers who have gone to their rest in the sure hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died in your mercy into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the mother of God, the apostles, the martyrs, <clears throat> Francis of Assisi, John and Anne, James, and all the saints who have found favor with you throughout the ages. In union with them, may we praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus the Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Taught by our Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beg you, Lord, from all evils and grant us peace in our times. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you promised us peace before leaving us. We ask you, Lord, to look not on our faults, our human failings, but rather that you would look on our faith and that one day you would gather us all around your table where you live and reign today and forever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. Let us take a moment and bless each other with the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Sisters and brothers, this is the bread of life and the cup of blessing. This is the Lamb of God who comes to take away our sin. Happy are we who are called today to be guests at this table. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. But let us pray.
Let us pray. Having shared in the gift of these sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, Lord God, that what your Son commanded us to do in remembrance of himself may strengthen among us the bonds of love. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <clears throat> Before Mass, I, I was wandering around the middle aisle there, and a, a, a young couple introduced themselves, and it said that it was their second time here at uh, St. John, St. Oh, no, excuse me, the south end site of St. Francis of Assisi. Someday I'll get it right. At any rate, uh, but I didn't get their names. I, they live up in Beltrone, and they said that they found this a very friendly place. I mean, why not, huh? <clears throat> so if you would tell us your names. What is it? Paul Salerno? Virginia. Paul and Virginia. So uh, make them uh, feel mo even more welcome than they already feel. <laughs> Judy, very good. I didn't meet her. She came in late. No, no. <laughs> later. She came in later, not late. Anybody else need a uh, round of applause to keep them coming back? Yes. You're how many? Fifteen. Great grandson. Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> Great-grandchildren are easier than uh, having children, right? Huh? Kathleen. Tracy's birthday today. Very good. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, Loretta. Very good. Anybody else? Yes. I'm sorry. Your wife's birthday this week. <laughs> Tell her if she were here and she told her age, we'd give her a real round of applause. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she sounds like a broken record. <laughs> Okay, let us bow our heads then and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord look upon us and be gracious to us, and as we go forward, allow us to be a blessing to each other and to all those we meet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We have celebrated Eucharist. Let us go forward to continue our good service of the Lord and all of the Lord's people.